Now at first glance zero might seem to be the easiest number to subtract because the answer is the same but of course that's fairly tricky to understand conceptually and so we'll wait um, and in that book it actually comes in week five in the series um, after the students have learned about taking away other quantities. So we can use a uh, 10 frame to model this operation quite easily. So five take away zero, here's five. It's the taking away zero that's the tricky part. So perhaps you could tell a little story about something that happened, um, and I would use stories for, for understanding what this means. For example, you could have um, a child with, uh, I don't know, some cookies on a plate, and their mother said, don't eat any of the cookies because then it'll spoil your lunch and that sort of thing. The child sits there watching the cookies, but the child doesn't eat any cookies. So how many cookies are left when the mother returns to check up on the child. Of course there are five because five take away nothing leaves the five where they are. We could do that sort of thing with our 10 frame and say to the students I want you to put your hand out and pretend to take away nothing. Open your hand, show me how many you've got. How many counters did you take away? The answer is nothing. How many counters are left? Five. We're dealing here with a um, a principle or a property of operations called the identity. Um, I looked this up and I couldn't find out for sure whether there is an identity for subtraction but I have a feeling it's not actually phrased that way. It's an identity for addition. What that means is if you add zero to any number it leaves the number the same and so it's called an identity property. In multiplication the identity properties um, contain within the number one of course. All right, enough technical talk. We'll move on to subtracting 10. Again, we can use 10 frames. Of course, this time we'll need a double 10 frame or two 10 frames together. And we're going to need a number that has 10 in one of the frames. Now, I would make sure that that 10 is on the left-hand side so that when we write this down as a number, we can see here we have one 10 and four ones. And that's how we write the number 14. So then we can say to our students, we're going to remove 10. Where can you see 10? What will we have if we take away the 10? So we're referring to the fact that the number in this example, 14, is made up of 10 plus four ones. So whatever our, ever, whatever our example is, it will be one 10 and some, what we sometimes call leftover ones. So if we remove the 10, what we've got left is those leftovers. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong number there. So that should be four, four ones. My apologies. So we can say to the students, we're going to remove the 10 like this. So we have no 10s at all. There's none left. We don't even write the zero for a single digit number. Um, we just have the four ones left. What's our answer? It's going to be four. So we're helping our students with their understanding of place value and their understanding of these teen numbers, or the numbers between 10 and 20, um, as at the same time as teaching them the subtraction.